Hello, hello. We are back. It is the Find Me in Seattle podcast. It is uh, Friday, November 20th, 2020. I took a couple of weeks off here from doing the show, uh, more, mostly out of laziness, I should say, but uh, also just to balance the anxiety and not really understanding of what was happening and where we we're going. And uh, two weeks ago was the election. And then last week, I would blame just strictly off laziness, really. Uh, so sorry about that. But thanks for jumping back here and listening to me. Right before I started the show, I was scrolling through my phone, scrolling through Facebook, uh, you know, that cesspool of uh, information, <laughs> if we want to call it information. And uh, I just find it so crazy that I grew up in a time where the internet was just, just starting. And we were always just told, don't believe everything you read on the internet. And now it feels like those same people who taught us that when we were younger are the same people who just mindlessly share nonsense on the internet, whether it's about politics or life or decisions or whatever it is. It just seems to be that uh, that same demographic of people who told us to look out um, are now the people who seem to flood these social channels uh, with headlines that they've read and it's just absolutely crazy the the post i'm thinking about was just um all these news corporations around the country having the same speech about not believing everything that you read online and there's so much fake news out there and not to share fake news and the person's calling out mainstream media and it just was weird to me because i was like aren't they aren't you saying the same thing like it sounds like this mainstream media is saying don't believe everything you read and don't share everything you read and then you're saying they're the ones that are lying i was like i think that sounds pretty uh agreeable to me that we shouldn't be sharing things that aren't research or things you don't understand or critical before we have all of the information and uh yeah so that's maybe my first rant here of the time it's just social media it's it's interesting how that impacted me so much mentally it delayed uh the start of the recording here and i just can't get my mind off it and so that's you know the first thought shared here this week during the podcast uh but it has been quite a wild month right the month started with the election the election was absolutely bananas just crazy all the hype around it the expectation uh for the second election in the row it just seemed like it was going to be a landslide victory for the democrats for the second election in a row uh america continually shocks us um with their support for donald trump who i think is a terrible person and a even worse president terrible leader guy does not care about anyone but himself, I can't believe that people want to support a person and think that he supports them at all. I don't think he cares at all about anybody except himself. He has yet to concede this election that is very clearly him losing and Joe Biden winning. None of these lawsuits that he has filed since uh, the election have worked whatsoever. It's not changing anything in January 20th. Joe Biden will be the president of the United States. I'm pretty confident on that. But uh, all of the questioning of the democracy seems to be very intentional from Donald Trump to uh, sow seeds of doubt within the general public about the truth or the trustworthiness behind the election. And this is just crazy to be living through and crazy to see and crazy to have our president who this was his election. He is the president of the United States. This election is under his uh, command and his leadership. And he's calling out all this election fraud while also the same government came out and are saying that this is the most legitimate election ever. And so I'm, I'm kind of shocked that Trump's not taking uh, credit for that, honestly. Uh, but the election was crazy. In another podcast, I said it was like the craziest World Series of all time because Tuesday, uh, so many of the in-person ballots came in, but there were just millions and millions of mail-in votes to be counted. So we all went to bed on Tuesday with not a clear picture, but definitely a clear picture that Trump was going to get more votes than uh, I expected or I wanted and uh, it went all the way the election wasn't called until Saturday and every day uh, I'm sure you were the same you were just watching whatever news organization you prefer or checking it out on Google or some website for what was happening as the votes seemed to trickle in one by one it it just took a long time but counting these ballots is a lengthy process especially when you have millions and millions more people voting by mail than 
uh, had ever done before, which I think was amazing and super cool. That's democracy uh, working at its best and giving more people the opportunity to vote, given that it's a pandemic, uh, which is worse than ever right now, November 20th. And it is crazy. This morning, I drove up Aurora, and that's where the closest free COVID testing site is to myself. And I've been there three times now over this year. And the COVID testing site is like in this converted, it used to be like one of those oil change, like drive through stations and you pull into the driveway and you drive kind of uh, maybe 50, less than 50 yards down. And then you pull into the station where you get tested. And today when I drove by, the line went out of that driveway, which just to get to the entrance would have been twice as long as I've ever seen it. And then it went three blocks down the street um, in the one lane. They had two security officers there guiding the line. And I'm hoping that that's just a lot of people getting tested, trying to create their own bubbles within uh, with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up this next weekend. But to see that line was uh, was just very scary. I hope the people that actually have symptoms are able to get tested. and But I'm expecting a lot of those people are just trying to get a negative test result so they can see their families, uh, which is understandable. I've done the same thing for other holidays, so I get it. Uh, but with that COVID, we had the newest shutdown and what they're calling the third wave of the coronavirus this week. And this is really why I wanted to get here on the show and get back on the mic because I need to document these things. Uh, if you're curious about some of the election results or the COVID stuff, uh, check out Communities Verb over there where I go deeper into some of those thoughts. But we have this COVID shutdown this week. Uh, Jay Inslee pretty much shut down uh, gyms, bars, uh, and restaurants for all dining in-person activities um, and retail establishments got limited to 25% capacity. If you're a restaurant, you can still obviously do to go and you can seat people if you have an outdoor seating area, which the outdoor seating area has been kind of funny to watch because these businesses are like setting up these tents and because it's so cold outside and it's raining, the tents are like fully surrounded. So they just kind of created a new building um, and it's not really like a filtered airspace. And so it's just kind of weird that we've made these businesses set up these tents that are outside, but they're not outside because once you put up the four or five walls, it's inside again. And that's just kind of like the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, this is kind of weird, uh, but and, and not a place I want to go. Right. If it's a uh, enclosed walls all around and a roof and there's no ventilation or filtration in there, it kind of defeats the purpose. And so, um, yeah, all of these places have been closed and. I want to take a moment here on the show just to reiterate the importance of supporting local businesses right now and going out and whether it's your local coffee shop or your favorite restaurant, uh, mom and pop that you support or you love, this is the time to be supporting those businesses. I'll preface that with if you have the means, if you're in a financial position to afford it, I really think one of the best things that you can be doing to support your community is to be putting your dollars into these local restaurants, buying locally when it comes to holiday shopping in some type of way, and trying to keep your dollars within our community because those support uh, all of those families and those small business owners. So if you have the means, you're getting food, please try to go to that uh, Mexican restaurant down the street, the Chinese restaurant uh, that's maybe below your apartment. Those places desperately need our help right now. And so I'm trying to do my best, not only to continue to amplify this message and its importance, but just do it on my own is, uh, spending my money in those local businesses. And, uh, the earlier this week, I just talked about coffee shops. I think those places are getting neglected. I used to go to uh, a handful of different coffee shops around the city on a weekly basis because I'd work out of there. And now I don't, And I probably only go get coffee like once a week now. And I can just tell, I used to, you know, I used to have daily rapport with some of these baristas. But now it's just like I see them on a Saturday or I see them on Friday when I go. And and it's unfortunate. But it's just a reminder, like, these places to maintain a brick-and-mortar business by selling coffee is already a feat in itself in a good economy in, in a normal world. Uh, but now it's even worse because nobody's going out. Everyone's kind of inside. We all got our own coffee makers. And so if you have the means, please uh, schedule some time to go pick up some food to go if you feel safe doing that, of course, uh, because those businesses really appreciate it and they really need it. It's, it's going to be important for the survival of our culture in all of our cities 
to have these businesses survive through this pandemic. And uh, that's going to be, you know, at least another year of going through this and managing social distancing until we really figure out long term solutions. So I implore you, if you can go pick them up yourself, do that. Obviously, wear a mask, practice uh, all your safety precautions. But if you want to get it delivered, that works too. Local businesses don't get as much money uh, because obviously those services, you got to pay for those services to get them delivered to you, but do what's best for you. Just make sure you're, you're trying to be intentional about where you're spending your money. And, and my one last point with where you're spending your money right now, think about the places that have treated you well over the years, right? What places did you go to and you said, wow, like their customer service, great. Their food was great. I really enjoyed my time there. Um, I'm obviously big. I'm constantly showing off a lot of businesses and go to new spots, but I'm trying to make a conscious effort. Like I need to go back to these other spots that have either treated me well or been good to me, or I really like the service or the food because it's easy to get distracted on what's the new business or thing I want to shout out. But going back to those places, that are uh, the cornerstones and foundations of our neighborhoods and our communities. Make sure we are trying to get back to support those places. I'm trying to be cognizant of, uh, you know, oh, we're going to get tacos tonight. Okay, I'm going to go to Green Lake and support this specific business instead of uh, approaching a new place just because they have treated me well and I have a track history there. And and, um, there's just that connection. So um, it, you know, maybe that's not the right thing to be saying when it comes to all these other businesses need support too, but I've just been thinking about the places that are near and dear to me and have supported me and making sure that I am getting dollars back to those spots. One business spoke out that I wanted to give a shout out. And that was uh, a gym that I guess you could say I formally went to cause I haven't been there since February before I went to Thailand and that was studio three. And Studio 3 is a gym, so you know what they've been dealing with, multiple shutdowns. They finally opened back up maybe like a month ago, and they're having small in-person classes. They also have a a healthy foods, grab-and-go, smoothies, counter service, uh, what's it called? It's not a restaurant, but food service business on the side that has continued to be going, but they're dealing. So now they have the like two most impacted businesses with all these COVID shutdowns with a gym that's been very volatile and a restaurant that's been extremely volatile, especially because they just opened it. Uh, it was like mid March when they opened that spot, which is just, um, very, very unfortunate timing. But one of the owners, he came out and, and he had this rant on social media that I really appreciated. And he was calling out his industry, uh, and, just talking about all of the complaining about the shutdown and he took a lot of responsibility in which I appreciate what he said. He said, I'm an entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses. I signed up for this. And that really resonated with me because I get it too. When you're, when you start a business, these are the things that you sign up for and it's not easy, but, and the world is going to continually throw you curveballs and the, how you operate your business within the confines of a city or a state or a country are also major factors in that. And so that is just the reality. And, you know, he called out these gyms that are complaining or disobeying the rules about the shutdown. And it's unfortunately, like these are the rules that you have to play in. And that's just the unfortunate reality of what's going on. I know it's crushing so many businesses and it's sad and it's terrible, but, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. And, uh, I appreciate him standing out and having that perspective as he's having multiple of his businesses shut down. And I'm sure financially this whole thing has been an extreme burden on him, um, his wife and his family. And to have that perspective as a business owner, uh, I really admire that. And it makes me want to, when we can go back to, to a gym, uh, to continue to be a patron at, at their business, because that was really cool. And, we need businesses to speak up like that. It's super important um, to speak up, at least for what you believe in. I guess you could say on the other side, there's the the other side of the argument is doing the same thing, but uh, there's just not a lot of gym owners specifically who are saying, you know, the industry needs to calm down and just take their medicine and, and figure out how we're going to manage getting by at this point. 
Some other news that happened this week, the West Seattle Bridge, uh, Mayor Jenny Durkin decided or confirmed that they are going to be doing repairs, not a full replacement. So that uh, shouldn't be done until mid-2022, and it's only a limited amount of time. So that'll be some other mayor and city council's problem to deal with. But we'll see. That's going to be a continuing ongoing situation and obviously not going to be done for 18 more months. So that's going to take a while. Uh, another thing we've been doing or I've been watching is the Canlis scavenger hunt. If you're part of Canlis Community College, uh, they have five days of scavenger hunts this week. And they have been very difficult. Amanda and I have been paying attention to them as they've come out. And we have not been close two days in a row. The one yesterday that was solved it, it was crazy. The clue came out and the answer was at the Woodland Park Zoo, which was not easy to find out, even though the location kind of seems obvious. And people were there like within 15 minutes of the clue. It was it was almost unbelievable how someone figured it out and got to the location that fast. Uh, but the Canlis Scavenger Hunt is something super cool. And uh, yeah, I've given them props before on the show about how they're handling their business and obviously they have access to a little bit more resources than their normal business but this scavenger hunt has been really cool and really interesting i'm excited to see the clue that comes out tonight we got thanksgiving coming up next week everyone's thanksgiving i expect is going to be very different than normal same for me and amanda here in our household uh we have not decided what business we are supporting that day but we will need to figure that out uh, probably today, honestly, because we got to get those orders in. And, uh, you know, more sitting at home, talking to this microphone, talking to the camera, and uh, trying to be as safe as possible. The last part here in the show that I want to talk about is the featured meal of the week, and this is mango sticky rice. It's a pop-up out of Wallingford. And uh, they are operating from Thursday to Sunday. You can pre-order on your website or on their website, and it's a very famous Thai dessert that we are very familiar with and it was just really cool comes in this you know maybe it's like a six inch container got a ton of slices of mango the mango totally had more flavor than I really expected I expected something kind of bland uh because mango is starting to go out of season but it was extremely flavorful very shocking and then it had uh I think four piles of sticky rice that they have different colors for every week just fun and festive and creative and obviously uh, mango sticky rice has a special place in our heart so we just absolutely love that and it was delicious they did warn me that they are ending the pop-up soon and so if you are interested in trying it out you want to try mango sticky rice uh, or looking for a unique dessert to try i would order that like right now when you're listening to this because it is november 20th i'm not sure if this is going to be their last weekend or they're going to go into next weekend but the clock is definitely counting down so please make sure you go and uh, check that out if it's something that you are interested in. So shout out to the Mango Sticky Rice pop-up in Wallingford. You are my featured meal and business of the week, I guess. I guess Studio 3 could have been my business of the week. But uh, that is it for me here on the show. Please uh, support those local businesses. If, I, if I'm nailing in anything from you listening to me on the show, it is so 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 important if you have the means to be spending your money in a very conscious way right now uh, because every dollar that goes back into these places really makes a difference that is how they pay their employees this is how uh, they get dance lessons for their kids this is how they pay for their kids to get a computer for school this is how they uh, continue to manage all of the health standards and changes that are coming in these businesses I cannot push you strongly enough to go support these local businesses and go to those businesses that you really care about that you don't want to see go away because everyone, every one of them is dramatically impacted right now. Everyone, none of them are really thriving. If you want to consider that, at least here in this city, I will, some are doing really well, but it's, it, I would recommend to not have that perspective and, and every dollar really counts right now. So please go do that. And uh, I appreciate it. And I know they will too. And it'll eat something good. It's it's really become the, <laughs> this seems the highlight. It's it's the uh, what's for dinner tonight question is an ongoing debate, and it probably will be forever. But it is kind of the highlight and something different to do. It's really the only chance that a lot of us get to go out. If you have access to the transportation to drive your car, walk in, pick up the food, walk right out, and enjoy the meal any way you can. I've had 
so many car dinners this uh, year. It's been very interesting and and uh, different, but it could be way worse. I'm super grateful for the many, many blessings that I have realized this year in 2020. Thanks for listening to the show. Please uh, give me five stars if you enjoy it whatsoever, especially if you're on iTunes. Scroll right down right now. Swipe over, give it the five stars. That would really help me a lot. Um, there's a lot of competition in the space. If you're watching this here on YouTube, love a, a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're more interested and you want to see some more stuff. Shoot me a message. As always, I am Connor Kaysen, your host here at the Find Me in Seattle podcast. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Treat people kindly. Support those local businesses. And we will see you next week.